welcome to TW 2016, The Branding Solution, and we are here on Shockwave in the penultimate show before Fastlane. So we're going to jump straight into pre-show, where we have The Revival picking up a win over the Bollywood Boys. Cody Rhodes picking up a much needed win, not quite got anything on telly for him at the moment. Um, looking at um, the tag teams that I don't have completed, I thought I'd have a look. And Marty Skull and Zack Sabre Jr. apparently a team, so I thought I'd give them a pre-show match to see what they're like. And they did very good together. They've both got nearly a 60 rating. So that could be another way in for Marty Skull to the main roster. Mark Henry defeated Damien O'Connor, who again outperformed Mark Henry. That's great to see. This guy could be something very special for this. So. Um, another, I just tried out a tag team. Yes, they are hill face at the moment, but Bridal and Evans are a tag team, and they beat the NXT tag team. Let's see what that was like. Not the greatest match, but hey, what in the hell? Akada defeats Nice, that's another great worker who probably should be given a chance. My NXT quarters are going to be ridiculous after Mania by the sounds of it. I'm a bit of a throw together match here. We have Perkins, Osprey, Fandango, and Devon picking up a win over the NXT crew. Sawyer Fulton, the weak link here. Rhino, the strong link. So I could even call Rhino back in. But I'm trying to get rid of some of the old ones. Look to the future. And a three on three with main roster guys, really pre show wise. We gave Cesaro, Bubba, and Kane victory over Aries, Max, and Phoenix. We get to see them. Um, they're all sort of around the same level. So, yeah. Nothing too fancy there. Into the main show we go. We start with the Beast Incarnate and Paul Heyman in the ring telling the world how this is the next reigning, defending and conquering champion in WWE history, Brock Lesnar. And Rusev comes out and says, even if you win at Barcelona, you have to get through me and I will not be losing at Wrestlemania. This brings out a sarcastic punk. You said you all think you can beat me, etc, etc. And then Randy Orton, who then tells Rusev that he'll be lucky if he even makes it to Wrestlemania once he's finished with him. Um, at Fastlane, Randy Orton, Rusev. Somehow that match has been bumped from about four pay-per-views. It was going to be a rematch, and it was another match. It was just returning and returning, and well, it's finally going to happen. I think once Randy Orton was injured for four days, and it was he got injured on this show and was fit on the Monday. So yeah, that's very annoying. Now it will happen. In a previously unannounced match, we decided to say, "What the hell? We're going to have a." Fatal four way tag team match to see who will be the number one contenders at, or who will face the Briscoe brothers. We had the Vaude Villains, the Bucks, Lucho Dragons, and the Golden Truth. And I went with the Vaude Villains to win, but John Cena to attack the Bucks during the match, which I think is good. Um, it's going to be a throwaway match, really. It could help them get to the next level very well they were never going to win the golden truth and the lucha dragons it's difficult you can't have face versus face and i'm building up a bit of a john cena aj styles thing leading up into wrestlemania time so this is continuing that and the briscoe brothers come out clap and cut a little promo on gotcha in english which is all fair enough, I agree. It's nice, helpful. And we continue our little push of Drew McIntyre again, where he picks up a win over Shelton Benjamin. Nothing fancy. And then afterwards, he cuts a promo about Apollo Crews and about how he is going to make sure he 
will not be walking after he is finished with him at fast lane. And we have a promo on Tyson Kig, um, picking himself up. He needs to, um, I have my plan for him, you may have seen it, but if you haven't, I'm not going to go into any more detail. So, that is Tyson Kidd prepping himself up, needing some boosting really, before his match went to Rich Swan, which he loses. Rich Swan continues to pick up wins, Tyson Kidd continues to lose. Um, Tyler Breeze cuts a promo out on Adam Cole, telling everyone how he's going to become the next European champion. Just to revert back to the kid thing, it's one of those where I need to just bring him right down before throwing him right back to the top. So it will happen at the pay-per-view. We'll get to see the new Tyson kid. Adam Cole defeated Zack Ryder. When Tyson, Tyler Breeze, tried to interfere, but failed. So, yeah, I think that's a good one. Uh, 66, solid enough match. Continues the title match on. And afterwards, the singles competitors attack, which is all good. Continues on what you need to do. We have a little backstage altercation between Styles, Joseph Down, Cena, and says... You can't do this. You cannot keep costing me and my team, my titles, our titles. You will pay. Watch your back, Cena. Which brings out Nakamura and Bobby Roode. Nakamura just wants to see what's happening. And Bobby Roode just smiling, knowing that he's got he gets a chance at both of them. And Kenny and Natami turn up. And they do a little bit of a challenge and say that they're going to have themselves a match. Turns out I forgot AJ was injured, so the frail for it is not AJ. It is Damien Sandow thrown in there. It's a good worker because he hates John Cena, so it's almost like Styles just knew about him. Uh, John Cena was the best in the ring at 93. Yeah, Nakamura has improved, as has Bobby. Kenny continues to get better, and we continue the storylines along. It's a good match. I was worried it wouldn't be too good, but I'm trying something slightly different on this show. We're having the big match in the middle, a couple of slow matches, and then a big match instead of ending with three big matches. So yeah, I think this has done what it needed to do. It looked good, everyone looked good. Um, the Ford Williams get an interview with Paul Heyman. I picked Heyman because he's actually really good at this sort of stuff. Um, and then we have just on the Briscoes, but how this is their chance. They don't want to let Tyler down. So somehow, the last pay-per-view was the club go for gold, and this pay-per-view is going to be the fashion capital go for the world. So, I don't know how I ended up doing this by accident, but it did happen. We then have Braun Strowman. I'm just feeding him people now to try and build him up to be a monster. It's hard work. It's going to take ages and uh, throwing in people. I'm throwing in my disposables at Surrey Derry Young, but the primetime players, I think, have run their course, so it might be time. And afterwards, Tyson, o- Titus O'Neill comes to attack Braun Strowman and just continues. Who doesn't get beaten up himself? So Braun Strowman has taken out both primetime players. We may do Braun Strowman and Zack Ryder versus the primetime players. And just sort of let Zack Ryder not do much. See what happens. AJ Styles then cuts a promo and says, Unfortunately, you all know I'm injured, but I want a match at Fast Lane. Just, I will challenge anybody who wants a match can come and face me. AJ Styles at Fast Lane. So, I haven't quite decided. And the main reason is because I'm not 100% sure he'll be fit on the day. So he could be a way of, if he's not, I'm going to just do something where he's weaseled out of his challenge. If he is, he'll face somebody. And I want it to be a surprise, but I do have a lot of plans for AJ. He's going to get up to a fast lane anyway, so, yeah. 
we are continuing our little push of ricochet and what's his name toad uh, and they they Tawaza. they pick up a win over Blake and Murphy again much needed keep us going I'm really happy um, let me do a little package on the revival I want to try and push them back to the top they've had a few title run-ins the problem is the Bucks are so over and the club is so good and the Briscoes are so good they're like my I haven't quite worked out who my fourth best team is but they're all kind of flirting around nothingness even though I did make them tag champions for a while we have Apollo Crews and cut up and Andrew McIntyre telling him how he's tired of everybody getting beaten down by Drew McIntyre He's going to put him back in his place and show that the legends deserve some respect. And then Apollo Crews defeats Pentagon Jr. In a pretty good match, to be honest. I wasn't expecting too much, but for 67, I'll take. We then have Brock Lesnar cutting a promo on CM Punk and ha talking about how next week they will have that contract signing to make their match official for Fastlane. Yeah, I like that. And wow. That is just become the best match I've ever had. By a long way. That's my first A match. Brock Lesnar and Rusev defeat Punk and Autumn when Brock Lesnar defeats Randy Orton. Uh, that is surprising to to new levels for me. I did not imagine that happening. This was kind of a thrown in match just to put both of them in. So I'm thinking maybe this theory works a bit better. But you can see by the performances they're all just about the average of 90. Brock and Randy one don't. But Rusev and Punk I'm looking forward to their WrestleMania potential match if it's Brock or Rusev. I just want to see any of these go at it. And we end with Paul Heyman. Actually, this was meant to be the announcement of the contract signing next week. The other bit was just Brock saying what he's going to do to Punk. So we're going to end the show and see whether we did do something great. We got an 86. That is brilliant. So we're going to head back to the main screen and just check up on the pay-per-view matches. And we are back. And with the best match I've ever had, we are going to see. Viewers believe it was awesome. Fantastic reviews. That's also good to see. I like that. Nothing to worry about there either. So... We've actually come back and there's been nothing to worry about. He once worked for the WWE. I like that. Um, maybe we should have looked to sign him, but he's probably not very over. Yeah. Pretty terrible. He, I thought he had a... Never mind. We won't worry about that. That's not important right now. I said I was going to probably... Well, Gold Dust leaves tomorrow. So there's one of the older ones leaving, passing their torch on. Um, what we're going to do with Tyson Kidd is we are actually going to turn him heel. As you can see here. And we're probably going to change his gimmick to something new. I'm going to do where should we go? What can we make Tyson Kid? Do we think there's anything good Tyson Kid could pull off? He was a bit cocky, wasn't he, back in his day? Cocky realistic? Uh, what else could we give him? And he, he was pretty American, wasn't he? So he can't do that. 
You can make him an acolyte. Yeah, that'll be fun. We could do that with the um, what they call the Ascension. I think we could actually just do cocky. Cocky. No, I'm going to change him to cocky. So that also means that we will have to do this with our friend who's coming back. I want him to be. Uh, I want them to be a bit of a hill force. He's going to be cocky as well. They're both going to be cocky. No comedy. That will do. It. So that's that sorted. I think we had a great show then, so at 76, that's up to 86, which is fantastic. I do have to change a few people in some of these storylines, most notably this one. We have to take Cody Rhodes out, really. We don't really think Cody Rhodes is going to be in it, even though his rate is very good. They're just sort of, I could take the whole club out of there really, can I? They're only supporting. AJ needs to be in there for before Mania. As a Cena in there, he will come out if he doesn't win. I haven't made my final decision yet. I can't look at what I said I would look at, so sadly. Triple H is actually number one, which is quite surprising. Our uh, truth, yeah, no, fair enough. Nobody knew for the franchise players. So we're going to keep finish the show off now and we're going to come back and we're head to Monday Night Raw to see who Roman Reigns' next opponent will be. Thank you for watching.